guys, welcome back to Evelyn and Peter. I'm Rachel and today I have a really fun lace spring cardigan for you guys. So to get started, you are going to need a worsted weight yarn. I am using Lion Brand Woolies for this pattern, but you can use any worsted weight yarn that you prefer. So it's just a weight of floor yarn. And then you're going to need a five millimeter crochet hook. And I also recommend stitch markers. We're going to need those when we are making the sleeves and doing some um, seaming in the cardigan. So a couple stitch markers would be helpful. And then of course, just a yarn needle to weave in your ends. Let me show you guys the cardigan really quick. So it's oversized, loose, comfy. And because there's so much positive ease and drape in this cardigan. The pattern is written um, with two sizes in one. So it's extra small and small is written together, medium, large, etc., up to size 5X. So again, make sure you're following along with the written pattern, depending on what size you're making, it's gonna have different stitch counts and different row counts and everything like that than compared to what I'm making in the video. So if you're making a size large, you'll wanna follow along with the pattern for the size large. I am making the size small in the video. So just be aware of that, that when I am saying stitch counts for mine, it will be slightly different depending on what size you are making. Um, again, the pattern is free on my blog and I'll just link that in the description. And then it also is available as a PDF download on Etsy and Ravelry. If you prefer an ad free version that you can print out, I have that available as well. And then it's also a kit with line brand and the kit comes with all the yarn you need, plus the digital pattern to make your sweater. So I'll link that in the description as well. Um, it's fairly simple construction. It's going to be worked from the bottom up. The, you'll be making one back panel and then two front panels, and then we'll add the trim in the middle here and on the sleeves. And just a quick note about the video tutorial. In the beginning, I am not starting off with the back panel. I went ahead and make, made that back panel and didn't film it. Um, but the entire stitch and row repeat and everything like that is exactly the same in the back panel and the front panels. The only difference is, is the length of your starting chain. So if you, are following along with the written pattern, you see that I have the back panel written first to do first. Um, so you can make that first, you can make your front panel first. It really doesn't matter as long as you know that the um, chains are different. So if you're watching me in the video and you're wondering why my chain is so short, it's because I am making a front panel in that set of the back panel. So you will have to make um, two front panels, one back panel, and your two front panels are exactly the same, and then your back panel is the same as well. It's just longer and wide, or the starting chain is just longer. So it's gonna be wider than your front panels, obviously. So I don't go over in the video how to do, I don't show every single panel because each one is the same. You'll just have to make sure that your chain, starting chain is the correct amount for whatever panel you're making. Um, I think that is it. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. And again, I'll have everything linked below for you guys, but I hope you guys like the pattern and I will see you guys next time. So to get started on your cardigan, you're going to need some worsted weight yarn. I'm using Lion Brand's Woolies yarn in the color linen, and it's just a worsted four weight yarn. And to get the specific amount of yardage, make sure you're following along with the written pattern on my blog. I'll have that linked in the description. And then you're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook and then a yarn needle to weave in your ends. And you might wanna have a couple of stitch markers on hand as well. So the stitch pattern is the same throughout the entire cardigan. We're gonna be making it in three separate panels, a back panel and two front panels. And to begin, you just wanna make a slip knot. So wrap the yarn, go ahead and grab the yarn and pull it through and then insert your hook and pull down. 
And in this section right here, I am making a front panel, but you can begin with a front panel or a back panel. In the written pattern, I have it beginning with the back panel, but I did not record that part since it is all the same. The only difference is our starting chain. So right here, I'm making one of the front panels and you will just follow along with your size to do that. So I am chaining 40. And depending on your size, you'll be chaining a different amount. So make sure you're following along with the written pattern, but both front panels for a size extra small and small have 40 chains. So you can see here I've chained 40. And now this stitch pattern is going to be the exact same whether you're making the back panel or the front panel. So once you have your chain length according to your size, we're going to begin on row one. So for the first row, you want to skip the first six chains that are closest to your hook. And in that seventh chain is where we will be working our first stitch. So yarn over twice and insert your hook into the seventh chain from the hook. And you can insert your hook wherever you are most comfortable whether that be the front loop right there or the um, back. I like to put mine in the back bump and then just yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the final two, and that's one treble crochet. And we're working a shell stitch into this chain. And a shell stitch is just working five treble crochet into the same space. So we're going to repeat that again, yarn over twice, insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the final two. So now we have two treble crochet in the same space. And here's our third one. So just repeat that again, another treble crochet into the same space. And you'll do this a total of five times. So you'll have five treble crochet all worked into the same space. And whenever we do that throughout this pattern, it's called a shell stitch. So we're just making a shell into the seventh chain from our hook. And also those six skipped chains that we skipped in the very beginning, that counts as one treble crochet and counts also as our foundation chain. So after you have your shell made, we are going to skip two chains. So the two chains that are directly after the shell that we just made, you're going to skip over them and not work anything in it. And in that following chain, we'll be working one treble crochet. So skip two chains, insert your hook into the next chain, work a treble stitch. So it's the same stitch that you're using in the shell. We're only just making one of them now instead of an entire shell. And then we're going to be skipping two more chains. So right after that single treble crochet, you'll skip two chains. And then we will be working a shell stitch into that following chain. So do the yarn over twice, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through the final two. And you're going to do this a total of five times all into the same space for one shell. And this is basically what we are repeating throughout the pattern. So again, skip the next two chains. And in that third one, insert your hook and work a treble crochet stitch. So just one in that next one. You can see the pattern repeat here that we have going. And then again, skip two chains, yarn over twice. And then in the next chain, we'll be working a shell. So five treble crochet total in this one.
And then again, you're going to skip two chains and then work a treble crochet into the next chain. And then again, skip two more chains and then you'll be working a shell into the following. And just continue with the same pattern repeat throughout the rest of this row. So work your shell and then skip two chains, work a treble, crochet into the next chain, skip two, work a shell, skip, ch skip two, work one treble crochet, skip two, do this all the way across for however long your chain length is. It's going to differ depending on what size you're making. So this will be the repeat all the way across and I will show you what to do once you get to the end of your chain. So now I'm coming up to the end of the row. I have three chains left. You're going to skip those two chains like you have been and work your final treble crochet stitch into the last chain. And that completes row one. Make sure you're following along with the written pattern and you can double check your stitch count. I have um, all the shells listed off depending on your size. It'll give you the correct amount you should have. So just make sure you are um, following along correctly. To start row two, you're going to chain four and turn your work. And that chain four does count as a treble crochet stitch. So that chain four is our first stitch. And then in that very same space where our chain four is, that's where we will be working our stitch. So yarn over twice, insert your hook into that same space and work a treble crochet stitch. Yarn over twice again and work another treble crochet stitch. So we have a total of three because the chain four counts as one stitch. And then to continue, you're going to skip the next two stitches. So skip the following two stitches in the row below and in that third stitch or the center stitch of the shell from the row below is where you will be working your next stitch. So it's the very center stitch of the group of five from the row below. So that third one, yarn over twice, insert your hook, work your treble crochet stitch. And it'll just be one single treble crochet stitch in the top of the shell. And then you'll be skipping the next two stitches. And in that top of the um, lone treble crochet from the row below is where you'll be working your shell stitch. So it's really easy to follow along when you're making it to just see um, the treble crochet from the row below. And that's where you'll be working your shell stitch. So again, our shell stitch is just working five treble crochet all into the same space. And you'll be doing this throughout the whole pattern. So whenever there is a singular or lone treble crochet from the row below, you know that that is where you work your shell stitch. And then wherever there is a shell stitch from the row below in that center stitch of the shell is where you'll be working your singular treble crochet. So again, you're going to skip the next two stitches and then work your treble crochet into the very center of that shell from the row below. And then skip the next two stitches and work a shell stitch into the top of the singular treble crochet of the row below. So it's a very easy stitch repeat. We're just going to be swapping back and forth between making a shell and making a singular treble crochet and whenever you have a shell in the row below you know to make one treble crochet and whenever you have one treble crochet in the row below you know to make a shell in it so do this all the way across the row and then i will show you guys what to do when you get to the end of the row and how to start off the next row Okay, so now I'm coming up to the end of row two, and you can see I have one shell left of the row below. So just as you've been doing, skip those two stitches, and in the center of the shell, work a treble crochet. And 
and then you're going to skip the final two stitches of the shell from the row below and in the top of that turning chain so the turning chain that we had in the beginning that I talked about that very top of the chain is where we're going to be inserting our hook so skip the two stitches and in the top of that chain work a treble crochet stitch and then in that very same space you're going to be working two more treble crochet for a total of three treble crochet so you're working all three into the top of that turning chain and you can see the stitch repeat across so just back and forth with the shells and the singular and you can see on the other end I also have three treble crochet that we started off with and that completes row two and for row three you're going to chain four and turn your work so this one is going to be slightly different than the previous row you can see that we have those three treble crochets from the row below you're going to skip the one where we just did the chain four and you're going to skip the next two so you're skipping all three of those and where you see the treble crochet post from the row below is where you're going to be working your first shell so you've chained four which counts as our first treble crochet and then skip those stitches from the row below and in that first singular treble crochet we're going to be working a shell so just work five all into the same space so that's one shell complete and then again you're just going to skip the next two stitches and in that third stitch or the center stitch of the shell you're going to work a singular treble crochet skip the next two and in the singular post you're going to work a shell and you're just going to do this all the way across the row just of just as you have been doing so one treble crochet skip two one shell skip two one treble crochet and do this all the way across and I will show you what to do to complete the row and how to start off the next row. Okay, so now we're coming up to the end of row three and you can see here we have those three stitches from the row below. So the two treble crochet plus our turning chain and you're gonna skip those two stitches and in the top of the turning chain is where you're going to place your last treble crochet. So work one stitch and that finishes row three. And so you'll be repeating the same thing throughout the rest of the panel. So you can see we have rows one through three here and row two and row three are what you're going to repeat over and over and over again. So row four is going to be a repeat of row two. Row five is going to be a repeat of row three. So all you're doing is just alternating between rows two and three that I just showed you for the rest of the panel. So for the size small front panel, we will be working 30 rows. So you're just gonna repeat rows two and three for a total of 30 rows and make sure you are following along and checking how many rows you need to make for your size. But that is all it is for this row repeat is repeating rows two and three so you can always go back and re-watch these last two rows if you get confused but it's just a repeat for 30 rows total for size small so i have made a total of 30 rows for my front panel of my sweater and i can show you guys how to tie off you want to make sure you leave a long length of tail so that you can use that tail to sew your front panels to your back panel so just yarn over and pull through and tug a lot of yarn through maybe a little more than you think you might need just so you don't run out and then you can go ahead and cut your yarn and just pull it all the way through the loop and this will be the tail that you use to sew your front panel to your back panel so once you have this front panel complete, you need to go back and remake the same thing all over again. So you need to make two front panels exactly the same. So exactly what I just showed you, you need two front panels. 
and then you're also going to need your back panel and the back panel is exactly the same as well. I'm not going to go through and reshow all of it because the only difference between the front panel and the back panel is the starting chain. So for the back panel for the size small I chained 88 and then I worked my rows one through three and then I just repeated two and three for a total of 30 rows. So the row count will be the same. The only difference is the length of your chain. So make sure you're following along with the pattern to see how many chains you need for your back panel. And then I will show you guys in the next video how to sew your two front panels to your back panel. And I'll also show you how to create the sleeves and the trim. So stay tuned for part two.